Now let's look at uh, the differences of um, of cells. Cells are um, either prokaryotic or eukaryotic. So what does the term prokaryotic uh, mean? Pro is before and karyon is a term which means kernel. So literally pro means um, before and karyo was uh, came from the word kernel which is a small little shaped structure and uh, a kernel uh, and u is after so now when they're looking at a cell then within the cell the most uh, visible structure is a nucleus and that's what the kernel uh, kernel is uh, is implying to is it's from the word karyon which means before the nucleus evolved and after the nucleus evolved. So in other words when we say the terminology of prokaryotic cell we are looking at cells that, uh, that do not have a nucleus and the two main domains that uh, include these are the archaea and the bacteria. Um, archaea and bacteria are uh, still being st studied to, f to be able to divide it into different kingdoms and classes. Uh, you might have heard the, the, the bacteria there are well known because they cause so many diseases such as TB or tetanus or throat infection or um, all kinds of strep throats and so forth. And not all bacteria are harmful uh, to us. Uh, as a matter of fact, bacteria assist humans in many ways, and only a small portion of these bacteria are disease causing. And uh, anyhow, we'll explore the bacteria later on. Uh, bacteria um, is a domain, and they're very small. Their 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 average size is about two to uh, six micron. I'm not talking about millimeters. Two to six micron, which is the reason. Um, this is the symbol for micron. Um, these bacteria are so small that you really cannot even see them with the light microscope and you need uh, oil immersion microscopes to see them. Archaea on the other hand are, um, are those bacteria that lived in extreme conditions. So these are the ones that most likely were present in the Earth's uh, atmosphere or the Earth's primitive condition. Extreme conditions mean a very high temperature, high salt, um, high or low pH. So these are all conditions that were um, that that are not present in in our regular environment, but they are present so far still because we do have some sulfur uh, living bacteria in hot springs, and we have bacteria that live in extreme cold temperatures. Um, even food that leaves in the freezer for for weeks or months can go bad. So that all includes the archaea kingdom, which are organisms that grow in extreme conditions. Bacteria that are shown in this picture over here are of three different shapes. Notice the one that is uh, uh, caucus or bead-like. These are called as the round bacteria. They're spherical and the plural is cocci. Um, then there are bacteria that are elongated or they're also called as rods. Uh, commonly these are the bacillus. write down spherical for the cocci, bacillus are usually rods and the last uh, shape of the bacteria are more twisted or spiral in shape as you can see in these two forms which is uh, spirillium or the spirochete. Now these are the three main shapes of bacteria and all bacteria will fall into one or the other of these shapes. So let's look at inside a bacteria as to what is the um, organization of components within a bacteria. Firstly, remember that bacteria are prokaryotic, which means they do not have true organelles. True organelles are those that have its own envelope. For example, nucleus that we will find later on in the eukaryotic cells, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, these all have its own membrane-bound structures. So that's all 
these are all absent in in the prokaryotes so they do not have true organelles they do however do have the function that an organelle would would form for example um, nucleus is the administrative region of a cell so the the bacteria would not have the nucleus but it has a region which is called as the nucleoid which has the location of the bacterial chromosome which means that the bacterial chromosome is all wound up in this region in um, it condensed in one region and that's a nucleoid region so coming back to uh, the components that you see in this beautiful picture, the first thing that you notice is all bacteria have a cell uh, envelope. A cell envelope of a bacteria is um, is a wall, and the cell wall is um, is shown over here. It covers. Um, the entire component of the inside. It also protects um, the bacteria from um, uh, chemicals or enzymes that can uh, break it apart and it also holds the shape of the bacteria. For example, the, the coccus and the bacillus and the spirulum are all uh, all maintained by the due to the cell wall the cell wall of uh, bacteria are um, uh, they have a carbohydrate but this carbohydrate is an unique to the bacterial kingdom and it is called as the uh, peptoglycan so it's a peptoglycan is uh, is it's a polysaccharide and it it is present in the cell wall some um, bacteria will actually have an additional uh, layer of polysaccharide over the cell wall and those are called as the, that's called as the glycocalyx glycocalyx is a, is a thicker layer of the polysaccharide that will lie outside the cell wall and glycocalyx will almost form a capsule for the bacteria for, so for example if this was a bacteria and this was um, its cell wall then um, then the capsule is going to be all around an additional code on the cell wall and you can see what a capsule can then do capsules will definitely help the bacteria to uh, in uh, to resist a, a host immune system. Um, capsules are common, for example, in um, uh, pneumococcus bacteria that cause pneumonia. And some, that's why um, it can trigger later on after a certain time because it's really re difficult to, to kill all the bacteria. Even if one survives and it is capsulated, it will resist and uh, will, uh, when the conditions come back, it will uh, start its infection. Now, so the glycocalyx would be the most outside layer of those that have a capsule. Then comes the cell wall, and inside the cell wall is a region which is called as the cell, is the is the plasma membrane. Um, plasma membrane, uh, which is also referred here as a mesosome, um, it folds into the cytoplasm just to increase again the surface area. Um, the cytoplasm uh, of a bacteria is inside which is all these light structures that you see over here all the the, the light purple structures it's more like a semi-fluid solution which is composed of water and organic and inorganic molecules and it is enclosed by the plasma membrane so if you were live sitting in a room the floor would be the component of uh, uh, the com the floor and the furniture all around would be all the cytoplasm and its components think of it this way so um, we 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 saw these structures. Okay, there are more structures that are present in, within uh, the the mitochondria uh, within the bacterial cell, and we'll look at it in the next slide. Uh, most activities, uh, keep in mind, most activities will take place in the mesosomes, which is the cytoplasm-like um, structure of the bacteria. Okay, um, the cytoplasm also um, com uh, includes all these different. Uh, okay. okay, inside a bacterial cell, there is a region that is called as the nucleoid region. The nucleoid region is uh, the region where you will find. Uh, the chromosomes that are anchored to the plasma mem membrane. So the chromosome of the bacterial inside would be like a loop of threads and it will be present more in one area and that area would be called as a nucleoid region. Besides these uh, uh, these uh, chromosomes, there are also other um, extra chromosomal um, DNA that is present in the cytoplasm and these are round 
or circular structures and these are called as the plasmids. Uh, plasmids um, have been shown to have a very significant uh, use in biotechnology because plasmids sometimes are very um, convenient tools to uh, play with in um, adding or uh, removing characteristics on um, in, in cells and we will talk about these later how plasmids can help in gene regulation and they can transform certain characteristics in in cells so these are um, round um, uh, chromosomal DNA structures and they're pretty much like photocopying machines so they will make copies of it very quickly uh, not much is known about what is the what what benefits does the bacteria have with these plasmids but um, it has been shown to be very useful as I said in biotechnology. Uh, besides the plasmid oh, which are um, a, a sort of like a vector to transport DNA um, into bacterium uh, the other um, and another structure that we want to look at are the ribosomes. Ribosomes are specified regions where protein synthesis takes place. A bacterial cell will contain thousands of ribosomes and these are even smaller. The, the ribosome in size in the bacteria are smaller uh, than the ribosomes that are present in eukaryotic cell. And this is important when you're designing drugs because if a drug is designed, it's usually targeted to break down the ribosomes of the bacterial cell. The reason being the ribosomes produce uh, proteins or help in manufacturing of proteins and if bacterial proteins are destroyed, then the bacteria will eventually die. But when you're targeting an antibiotic to a whole cell, you do not want the whole cell to die itself. So ribosomes are very important. The, the, the kinds of ribosomes that are in bacteria are different than the eukaryotic ribosomes. Besides um, the ribosomes, other inclusion bodies are found in the cytoplasm and these are mainly used for granules of, uh, or stored um, regions for certain substances. And sometimes uh, these inclusion bodies will also break down certain substances when energy or nutrient are required. Um, there are other bacteria that are called as the photosynthetic bacteria, and that is because they are cyanobacteria. These have um, a, a, a structure called as thylakoid, where chlorophyll and other pigments are present. And the presence of chlorophyll um, in thylakoids helps this uh, bacteria to uh, ma manufacture its own food. Now not all bacteria have chlorophyll, they're only those that are called as the cyanobacteria that will have them. And the cyanobacteria are usually the blue-green bacteria because they uh, they have a shade of blue or green in them. And th these bacteria eventually, because they undergo the process of photosynthesis, they were able to release oxygen as a side product and perhaps these are the ancestral to the organisms um, that we are more familiar with because they they introduced oxygen in the earth's atmosphere. Um, we went through a lot of different structures let's go on with a few more uh, appendages that are present in the bacteria. These appendages are called as uh, the fimbri, flagella and the uh, sex pili. Now these, um, all of these are appendages of a bacteria that will help bacteria to move or propel um, within the water because that's usually an aquatic environment. Flagella is the more whip-like structure that you can see over here. So this is the flagella. It helps sometimes to rotate the bacteria also. Fimbri are small the fimbries are small bristle like uh, it's more like hair like that is present all around the cell surface so all of these that you see on the side are all fimbri so you've got uh, the flagella that is going to help in motion fimbri will also help in motion but it will also help the bacteria to attach to a surface for example um, a, the nasal passage or uh, intestinal membrane it helps it to stick to the surface. And the last appendage is called as a sex pili, which are almost rigid uh, tubular projections that are that are that are formed when one bacteria um, actually I'm going to draw one over here. Let's see if I'm able to draw it. I'm not a very good artwork as you can pretty much relate to it. This would be the sex pili. They actually are like rigid tubular sucks uh, um, 
um, openings that are formed which helps the DNA to exchange from one cell to the other. So um, these are all the structures that are present in the prokaryotic um, cell. Let's just quickly go into the archaea. Um, the archaea cell are more diverse in shape um, than the than um, the bacterial uh, shape, which are only three conspicuous ones that we looked at. Um, these are definitely the prokaryotes because they do not have any uh, organelles or any uh, clear, distinct regions within the within its. Uh, cell. Sometimes they can be lobed, sometimes they can be more like um, like plate-like structures and um, sometimes they, most of the time I've seen archaea's pictures are very irregular so it's very difficult to uh, point out what is the exact shape of um, of an archaea. It's important to remember that they do not have peptoglycan in their cell wall. They have other polysaccharides um, and are arranged differently but they do not have the same uh, peptoglycan uh, polysaccharide that was present in the bacteria. And most likely these are the ones um, are um, the ancestors of the modern day eukaryotes, the one that we will look at in the next sections. Um, these can, um, these arose when, as I said, mentioned earlier, when uh, when there were extreme habitats in the Earth's atmosphere, and as the Earth cooled down and the conditions um, uh, got better and there was more oxygen evolved, the eukaryotes had evolved. However, these are still present in the uh, in the Earth's uh, environment today at extreme condition. Um, the base sequences of the DNA and RNA of the archaea uh, match more to um, the base sequence of the eukaryotes. So that's the reason that these are considered to be more ancestors to um, the eukaryotes. Now um, this concludes the section of the prokaryotic cell. Remember bacterial cells and um, archaea are both um, prokaryotes. Bacterial cells have only three major parts. There was a cell envelope a cytoplasm, an appendage, and we looked at and explored all the different uh, regions within each section.